All right, well, uh, good evening. This is Pastor Rob, and I'm going to do a devotion here for uh, Thursday, uh, July, let's see, make sure I got it right, 16th, July 16th. And um, we're continuing on the theme of God having an order to human life and the creation. And today, we're going to deal with marriage. And in Genesis chapter 2, we read the following, starting at verse 20. The man gave names to all livestock, all the birds of the heavens, and to every beast in the field, but for Adam there was not found a helper fit for him. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and while he slept, took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, This at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife and they shall become one flesh. What we find here is that God has an order for human marriage. And actually what we find here are a couple of things that are important for us to see. First of all, we find that marriage begins with God and not with society. And what that means then is that although we live in a society where uh, we are constantly redefining marriage, unfortunately, we find that really society doesn't have that authority because marriage is not something created by human beings. It is created by Almighty God. And it is God who acted as the father of the bride and brought the first woman to the first man and made them a married couple. And so we need to see that. Marriage is from God, not society. And therefore, he is the one who decides what's it for, who can enter into it, and what the parameters are within marriage. The second thing we find is that marriage by God and by God's definition is the joining of one man and one woman in a covenant relationship. And that marriage is until death do you part. We find our Lord Jesus making this very statement in Matthew 19 and Mark 10 where he, he quotes these verses from Genesis and then adds this, what God has joined together, let no man separate. In other words, marriage between one man and one woman is to be an eternal covenant for this life. We're not married in the next life. But while we're in this life, once you're married, that man and that woman are husband and wife until death do they part. No one has the right to separate that marriage and no one has the right to redefine marriage. Now, someone will say to me, <clears throat> well, pastor, didn't they have other forms of marriage in the Old Testament? And the answer is, yes, they did. You're quite right in bringing that up. They did have polygamy. However, what we need to understand is that polygamy came as a result of the fall, the result of sin. It was not what God intended. We find very quickly uh, after uh, the sin of Adam and Eve that marriage began to devolve into something it wasn't intended to be. We find that very quickly, uh, within two generations of Cain, you ended up having um, people having more than one wife. And then we find, uh, even after that, the people started having relationships, sexual relationships, with all kinds of things that they were never intended to have sexual relationships with. You had the rising 
of uh, the relationship of unholy angels with human beings. Sexual relations such as homosexuality and other perversions. God brought wrath on the earth because of the uncleanness that came. And that uncleanness is a direct result of the rejection of the marital bond between one man and one woman that God established. And I would add <clears throat> that when God brought Noah and his family onto the ark, Noah and his sons were all married, and the relationship was one man, <clears throat> excuse me, one man and one woman. And therefore, God was going to start over with that particular marriage structure. One man, one woman. And when Jesus declared that marriage was between one man and one woman, he went back to Genesis and said, that is what God wants. All the other forms were outside God's desire. And our Lord Jesus came to make it clear that marriage is to be between one man and one woman until death do you part. And it's based in that relationship, that covenant faithfulness, that children are to be brought into the world. You know, we see all kinds of uncleanness and, and hurt <clears throat> in this world because that nature of marriage has been forsaken. It's a shame. But the order of marriage is one man, one woman, living in the covenant of holy matrimony. And in that covenant, they are to raise up children. That is God's plan for marriage. All the other things you see are an aberration and in many cases an abomination to God. The Christian cannot support and endorse homosexual sex, homosexual marriage, or any other form of marriage that is not one man, one woman in that holy union of marriage. So today, let's remember God has a purpose and a plan for marriage. One of the main issues in our society is that people have rejected that. And that is a root cause for all kinds of poverty and incarceration and child abuse that we see before us now. If we want to get right as a society, we need to take again what God has given and honor it. All right, let's pray. So, Father, we thank you that you have given us holy matrimony. Lord, we ask you to forgive us for not honoring it as it was intended. Lord, guide our hearts and our minds so that we may honor marriage the way you honor it. And we ask this in Jesus' name, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. All right, God bless you.